Lord, let it be pleasing unto you. A living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto you. We give you glory, honor, majesty, God, in Jesus' most awesome name. We have given thanks. Everyone says, Amen. Put your hands together for the King, eternal, immortal, the holy wise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take your seats. Hallelujah. Because we have seen the goodness of the Lord. So if God has been good to you, get ready. Somebody is going to take your testimony very soon. But without wasting time, the scripture says, first of all, prayers, supplications, giving of thanks should be made for all men, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may lead a peaceful life in all godliness. Prayers, supplications. Supplication means you are asking God for mercies. And the Bible said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, reading from verse 12, he said, when they sinned against me, he said, I will commit them, I will allow them to be disciplined by men. Pestilence, war, famine will break out. He said, but if the people that are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I, the Lord, will hear their prayer. I will answer them by healing their lands. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that if you pray today, something great is going to happen in this new month for Nigeria? I strongly believe that. God is not as you lie. It is not the son of man that repents. A little girl of six sat by a great man of God. John Gillick. And a man came who had an open tumor. And he's been given just two more weeks to go. And as the man was narrating his problem, seeking the Lord for help, the Spirit of the Lord entered into a girl that was just six years old. The girl climbed up on the lap of the man that had two more, placed her two hands around his face and head. And say, be you fire in the name of Jesus. Then the man fell down and started screaming, fire, fire, fire. And you know the story. The open wounds were closed up. Why? Death could not hold him captive. So it does not matter. He said, if this one will refuse to praise me, I'm able to raise up singers among the stones. <laughs> he said, the very stones and the tree, they will praise me. If you've gone through the forest before, you've gone to some of these uh, natural parks, what do you see the trees doing? It's always, isn't that? Have you ever entered? It's always totally still. No, they are always moving. They are always praising God. They are always moving, showing for, yeah, this is the beauty. I am the beauty of the Lord. I'm still here. I have not been turned to firewood. So we're going to start praying for our nation with thanksgiving. Yes. A lot has happened. But the message of God has kept us. So I want us to take our position before God. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. But let your heart reach out to God. Whatever position, if you want to kneel, you can lean and say, Father, I want to thank you for Nigeria. And for those of you that are joining from other nations of the world, I want you to appreciate God for that beautiful nation he has placed you. Stop complaining. The secret to greatness in any foreign land is for you to pray for the peace of the land. And if you are here today, you are watching, you are not a Nigerian, but you are living in Nigeria. Ah, 
the secret to greatness to having houses, having investment, having great wealth in Nigeria is to pray for the peace of Nigeria. I want us to appreciate God this morning. Father, we want to appreciate you. From January to now, your mercy has kept this nation. We want to thank you for the leaders, the people in leadership at the moment. We want to thank you for your grace. It has been your grace and your mercies. Father, leadership entails a lot. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the force in Nigeria, those in the legislative harm in Nigeria, those in the judiciary harm in Nigeria. We bless your name for your mercies. We bless your name for your mercy. The more we praise you, the better it will become. We want to thank you, Lord, for all the executive leaders in Nigeria. From the first man in authority, the president, to the last person in authority, even in our, as representatives. Father, we bless your name. We glorify your name. Thank you, ancient of days. And Father, I want to thank you for all the governmental parastators, the earth sectors in Nigeria. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for stepping in concerning even the strike that is ongoing. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you make our leaders to hear the outcry of this medical personnel. Sir. Father, we thank you for giving them wisdom on what to do, oh God. Father, Lord, you place your hand upon Bezalel. You gave him an excellent spirit this morning. I've come to supplicate for the president, all governors, all in the executive arm, all local government leaders in our state, in different local governments. Father, including the kings on the throne, the ballet in different regions in Nigeria. Daddy, the Sherikis, Lord, will leave them into your hand. The Bible says the heart of the kings are in the end of the law like the rivers of water you direct it. In favor and the good of our people. In favor and the good and better Nigeria, a new Nigeria. Direct the heart of our leaders. Huh? Turn their heart, oh God, to an heart of flesh. Huh? Are there out of stone? Daddy, remove the heart of stone and turn it, oh God to the heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. Let the cry of the poor, the needy, all those that are working. Father, Lord, let it reach out. Let it reach out in their sleep. Let it reach out as they go about their businesses. Let it reach out in different nations. Let it reach out. Lord, we has oh God, arise. You rose up for the children of Israel after 400 years of pain and agony. Father, arise. Teach our leaders righteousness. Help our children to be, our leaders to become, oh God, compassionate leaders, oh God. Leaders after your heart, oh God. Turn every heart of stone to the heart of flesh, we cry this morning. Father, forgive the sins of our people. Forgive the sins of our nation. Forgive the sins of the founding fathers in this nation. Forgive, oh God, all that were done out of ignorance. Daddy, have mercy upon this nation. Let this nation remain, O oh God. Let the glory of Nigeria arise, O oh God. Father, we are trusting in you, O oh God. In these two remaining months to close this year, Baba, visit this nation. In this week, visit this nation. Do what only you can do, Almighty God. Father, we are praying whatever it is that is paralyzing economy of investment us in Nigeria. Let that spirit of corruption die in the name of Jesus. That spirit that makes people to be afraid to invest. Let it die in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying, oh God Almighty, Father, Lord, cure this nation of leprosy, of corruption. Cure this nation of insanity in any level. Cure this nation of greed, oh God. Father, Lord, by extension, we pray that you will heal your church also. You will make your church to arise in righteousness, oh God. Every corruption in the church, let it die in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, up envelope your church, the body of Christ in general, from the lady, oh God, 
Almighty to the parishioners. Maketeke boseke teke keke 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 ke bosanda rabanga ta yika bosa. Oh, raba ba 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 Jesus, you will relocate those inhabitants, those who are dwelling there, and the Lord, you will deliver our nation. Father, comfort everyone that's lost one person or the other, and let your mercy speak. Can we just supplicate for the mercies of God for those that might still remain in that building? Because I believe God might still be there. That the Lord will feed them with Iranian food, He will give them angels' water angelic water in the name of Jesus Father there are still people who oh Lord at that crash site Father I had testimony of people that after 10 days they were still there and they were able to rescue them Father we are praying in your mercy are there souls at the ground floor are there souls at the second floor are there souls in any of the floors Lord God Almighty are there those that are trapped by the world in your mercy save their soul Use them for your glory, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let wisdom be given to those, O oh God, the rescue team, O oh God, that are walking night and day in the name of Jesus. And we also pray that there shall be no loss of life, O oh Lord, of any of those that are the rescue team in the name of Jesus. And those that are already in the hospital, Father, we pray that you have mercy. You will heal, you will restore them back on their feet. Thank you, mighty Father. For in Jesus' most awesome name, we have prayed. If the Lord has put the burden of the Lord upon you for Nigeria, please. You need
need to be part of those that are standing in gap for the nation. Join the prayer team in this ministry. Join the travelers group. Join the intercessors. And if you are outside the nations, you can join the watchers that pray. Even the intercessors, they pray online at the moment. They physically pray and pray online. And if you are for far away, look for an intercessory team to pray with. You can start with you. And then you can invite a friend that you pray. The burden of the Lord is resting upon the shoulder of so many. If you believe you are one of them, can you just wave your hand and say, Father, I take grace this morning to pray night and day for Nigeria. I take grace, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise. I will give you just one moment. Lift up your own expectation before God. He said, the expectation of the righteous man shall not be cut short. Mention that thing. Because you have just been refused. <laughs> you have been rejected. The Bible says he was rejected so that you would not be rejected. He was despised so that you would not be despised. He said, because of the servant of God that is upon you, your name and presence, anywhere your document get to, is as ointment poured for. Therefore, all men will favor you. He was despised so that you would not be despised. He was refused so that you would not be refused. If there's a door you knock and it was shut, go back and knock again. But wear the perfume of favor before you go. Father, we thank you. You are the Lord that opening and no man can shut. Whatever the situation your people have lifted up in their heart, give us an answer of peace. Let us have the cause to testify. We give you glory and praise to God. Put your hands together for the King of glory. You believe God has heard us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe you are glad to be in God's presence. You see, we don't have to fake it. If it is there, it's there. If it is not there, it's not there. But I know God is here. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness in the house? Hallelujah. So I need you to do something crazy this morning. <laughs> If truly you believe that God is here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. God is good. How many of us have testimony this morning? You don't want to keep it to yourself. God has been so good. You don't want to keep it to yourself. You have a witness in the house. Hallelujah. One person. I can see one hand. Hallelujah. Second, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please quickly come. Come and share your testimony. Come and tell us what God has done. Hallelujah. I beg, let me, let me appreciate them as they come. Come on, appreciate them. These are the guests of honor. <laughs> hallelujah. I am the very, very one that you have shown me mercies. You have shown me mercies. You have shown me mercies. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited this morning because I have God that shows me. I'm so excited. Although to cut the long story short because I have a lot to say. So much to say. I just want to thank God this morning as we are about to come to church. We have already reached the bus stop waiting for a vehicle that will pick us. So I was standing with my two uh, children and my younger sister's son. She always brings him every weekend to spend with us. So I was trying to carry my bag and the three of them were standing beside the road. Before I know, I had people shouting, Jesus! When I turned, it was my daughter. So when the bus that was passing, she just ran to enter the bus. <laughs> like, when I turned, I noticed that it was my daughter in front of the bus. I screamed, Jesus! The man just mashed brakes. And my husband rushed and dragged her back. So I, 
How did, how did it happen? You are standing here with us. What pushed you to the express? So when I, everybody in the express, well, I thank God, oh, thank God, because I know the God I have. I know the God I am serving. Even when people go and fail, that is not my portion. What happened this morning? By now, I would have been calling, calling, oh my God. I, don't want, I just want to thank God. Hallelujah. To... Come on, let's appreciate God for that. <laughs> well, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness. God is awesome and he's good. You think he's not there, he's there. Uh, my, my little niece just had a procedure. And uh, all we could just say was thank God. Because when we now wrote back to the school, we had to go and get her out from school a week before time. Because every time she was always complaining this headache and the stomach. So we thought it was the glasses. She needed to change her glasses. So that one was there. And she's a very active, very talkative type. But somehow she's still complaining. And they have very good hospital there. My sister said, no, let's go and get her out. So when they got her out, we took her to the hospital, to this scan, did everything. The story was up and down. They're just saying this or that and all that. Then it was the second week. Now, finally, one of her classmates, who's a doctor, came to the house and said, let me check properly. We now saw what was the matter. It was as if God just opened the, uh, our eyes. So they took her for a procedure, and they did everything. And I just want to give God the glory that it went well, and she's out. Before, before the very first time she came out, when I was calling her, when she was in pain, she was just shouting, and I said, it's okay, it's okay. She said, wait. I said, big mommy, give me the exact time. I don't like this pain. I said, sorry, it's fine. Everything is okay now. I just want to thank God because even when we wrote back to the school, this was what happened. The house parent was shocked. She had been going to the hospital and the clinic there. They would just give her parastamol, just give her this. And we just give God the glory and we thank God for what He has done and is faithful. And not only that, and I just want to thank God because so many things have happened concerning life and God has been there. I remember during the time of the COVID, I one of my brothers had one. It was it was a serious one, and God was faithful, was with him. When another doctor in Canada heard it, was shocked at what, what happened. Even the doctor that was working with us, when he now heard it, he was saying that I now understand what your brother went through. So I just give God the glory that he's been there and is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, I actually don't have a testimony, but I want a testimony. This morning, doing PhD, Reverend said that we should say the things that be not as though they were so that they can be so. So all the things I'm waiting for, so, now this is the theory. If I believe that the things I want to see will be the things that I will see so that they will be the things that I see, you understand? Then I can testify. I, am, I have the right to testify. So this morning, I thank God that I see the things that be not as though they were in Jesus' name. Amen. I love that. Did you get the gist? I love that. <laughs> That's lovely. He said, Rebbe said, call things that be not as though they were. He understands. He has come to testify that what he has said, he will experience it. Hallelujah. Me too, I have a testimony. You know, today, the program that um, is coming out this evening, by the grace of God, you know, I've been having this thing that, okay, one way or the other, you know, let there be a garden of people. Let's talk about Nigeria, the way forward, what we can do, how we can encourage people. You know, I've been on it for a while. But um, on the October 1st, when I was preaching at the uh, PhD, so he said something. He said, if you have been having this feeling continuously, I said, it is time for you to step out. It was as if that word hit me. And I said, okay, it's time to step out. So there was this man, um, there is this man, the main speaker that is coming today. You know, he used to present on Radio Legal Stock, uh, Mr. Denny. So I'm like, okay, you are passionate about this nation. I'm passionate about it. So what can we do? So he said, okay, let's do something. That was what gave back to get involved today and I thank God that I took the step I went to meet Reverend I said Reverend this is what is going he said go ahead 
Hallelujah. So I want to appreciate God for that because you see, when I started this, the things that I didn't know before started coming. And this is just what God can do. So I want to appreciate God for that. I want to give him glory for that. That today, even though you are not seeing me as the minister, but I know that God is doing something here. These people that are here, God is is the one that, that, you know, that is bringing them hallelujah. So I want us to stand up on our feet because we need to give thanks to God, especially that first testimony. You don't know what God did for our sister. You don't know it. You know, I've escaped something like that before. When just, just in a second, just in a second, just in a second, they can just Hallelujah. Okay. It's an exception anyway. Praise God. I just want to thank God. His mercy is always there. And my name is Mercy and has always been merciful. In all ways, he said, Edda, he will move us from where, wherever danger is. Either we are behind or we are forward. This building that happened at Ikoi, it's just a, let's say three minutes away I just left before the thing happened. I was just standing at the side of it and God sent an angel to pick me up. The guy said, the guy that picked me out of, I was just standing, there's someone that I always wait for to come and pick me around there. The guy has immediately called me that he has gone. I just wait, I just say, God, I need your angel because the Reverend, Please, if you are not if you are not following the devotion in the morning, please it works and the works that the word that comes works and when you use it, it pushes you to the things that you are you want to struggle for days. And Reverend is always speaking in the morning, and when you go out with it, you get the push. And when I was working, I since the children are in uh, mid term break. I just said, let me rush out. Because when they are in midterm break, I take my break in, at work. That is what God just did for me for the work. At the end of the day, I just said, when I looked at my missed uh, women's uh, uh, watch, uh, fellowship, I just said, let me go. It was just a uh, few minutes to two. Before I get to my places, that f- five minutes after two, I didn't get a car. At the end of the day, a lamp was across from the service lane and picked me, and now picked two ladies. When we are just away, that is when we started hearing news that Polar's building. I just want to glorify God for his mercy and his self. Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> My pastor, <laughs> I cannot deny you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I want to give thanks to God for my cousin. In fact, it was in the building, that building that collapsed. He was an engineer, you know, the, you know. I mean, the guy is uh, one of his friends. And what happened really is that we were supposed to have a family prayer meeting that night. So, why he was, I think, why he was there, he called me. He said he has something to do because he, he wanted to stay with the guy. The guy asked him to stay. Why? But he asked me that, okay, will I take the family prayers? I said, me, I'm not taking anything because you didn't tell me on time. I won't do, I will not be able to, I mean, take that. So he had, to, he had to tell the guy that because of what he has to do, get to a place there, come and take the fa- family prayer, he will have to be leaving that place. And that is how he left the place and he was not involved. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that um, other people that are involved were, I mean, not special. But we thank God. I really give thanks to God. We bless the name of God. Oh, this God is awesome. Father, thank you. Let's lift our hands and appreciate him. If you are out of danger, it's God. It's not because you know how to do it. It's not because um, you have fasted or you've prayed. Is God. 
I just want you to appreciate God this morning. I appreciate him this morning. Say, Father, I thank you for protecting me, my family, my friends, my colleagues. Lord, I thank you. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you because we are not taking time to mourn this morning, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We appreciate you, Lord. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah, church. Praise the Lord. Are we happy to witness the first Sunday of the month of November? We should be excited now. It has not been by our power, by our strength that we're here today. So if you love God this morning, just wave those hands and worship Him in your words.
world deliver them this morning i want you to ask god father as your word come i receive strength from your word to do i receive strength i receive life of your word the bible talk about the engrafted word that is able to save and save your soul this morning just say father i receive the engrafted word this morning to save me to deliver me from my oppression from anything that is hindering you father we thank you lord by your word this morning we receive strength in the name of jesus lord yes he can say that he speak unto me the spirit enter me and set me upon my feet thank you jesus because as your word come it will set us on our feet lord and to do your will thank you lord jesus we we'll bless you father in jesus mighty name we are pray. let's stand up with jesus joy let's welcome our pastor pastor paul on our shore god bless you sir Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for grace. Thank you for keeping them, watching over them. We commit them to you afresh again. And we trust you to keep them from all evil and darkness. That your eyes that are upon them will remain upon them, securing them from all darkness. We give you praise. We give you adoration. As they learn today, Lord, fill them with wisdom and knowledge. Impart them with understanding. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're blessed. 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 Those, those, those of you who have not touched, where are they? If I have not touched you, if I have not touched you, come. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. I just want to disappear. <laughs> are we done? Yes. Okay, I'm going. Amen. Hallelujah. E kabo E marora E kabo E marora E kabo E marora E kabo E marora E kabo Emarora, Ekabo, Emarora. You know, in, in the Yoruba language, when an elderly person enters your house, you say Ekabo, meaning you're welcome. Emarora means uh, come in gently, come in, you know, majestically. The house is your house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift up your hand and just tell him that this morning. E kabo, e marora, e kabo, e marora, e kabo, e marora. Ekabo, e 
Lera bo shatani la ba tori anana ba. Lera bo shatani kani kabaya. Lero ba sina ni kana ba bo suvi anana ni. Lera bo shatani anana. Me tu tani galam bo suvi. Ve do shine ya ta ta boro de ya daka. Lera bo suvi abada. Step in, Lord, into every area of our lives. Step in, Lord. Read about it. Are there areas you need him to step in? Please begin to tell him right now. Step in, Lord. You are welcome into my home. Step in and fix it. You are welcome into my business. Step in and fix it. You are welcome into my career. Step in and fix it. You are welcome into my personal relationship with you. Oh, Lord, step in and fix it. Step in, oh, Lord, that peka dovli ambas katanta. Yada babi ke tofle bia pas kotanta bariata. Arika babi ke tofle yampa shofia pesketa. Arika babi ke tonta lianta tapere baya. Arika baba shofia pekede, 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 pekede. Babo shofia yampa. Arika pata rianta sapaya. Yaba baba ke tofle. Chest pain. The Lord is stepping in there. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. He's stepping in. Yes, welcome him. The I am that I am. Yeah, Papa got off the back of my Arugua Joe. Red a pass of here. I'll be like about you. Red a pass of a we bet she bet. Red a papa can ask for my yeah. Yeah, that a pa. I live with a shit. Red a papa Sophia and pass can find a buyer. There's healing right now. Just receive it. Edic. I feel edic removed in the name of Jesus. I rake a papi as you got taught a buyer. The discomfort in your body is gone. Just check it out. That discomfort is gone. Begin to give him thanks. You begin to rejoice in his presence. That discomfort is gone. Just check it. It's already gone. And begin to bless his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Father. He's stepping in for you. Wherever they are holding you, the Lord is making them to pay. In the name of Jesus. Yes, the hand of the Lord is discharged this morning. Arika Papi Skofi and Peska Tada Paraba. Records that are against you are being erased. I can see that in the spirit. Aroko Tofi and Peska Daba. Arika Papi Katofi and Peska Tana Fadia. Arika Papi Sofi and Peska Tada Fadia. Arika Tonski and Peska Tata Bar. The mighty one in battle is fighting for you. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. In the life of every single one of us, let your enemies be scattered. Let your enemies be scattered. Let your enemies be scattered, O Lord. Arise, 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 arise. Marriages are happening here. Those who are trusting for marriage, marriages are happening. Receive in the name of Jesus. Arika papi kato fredia paskata. Arika papi apaskofia pesele bata kalia tasaba. Arika papi kato fredia paskata baniata. Ariando shapaya. Master body. A cab. A marora. A cab. A marora. A cab. A marora. A riroala. Thank you. A marora. Two more times. E kabu, e marora, e kabu, e marora, e kabu, e kabu, e marora, e kabu, e marora. One more time, e kabu, e kabu. So we tell no. In the midst of your children, thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you. Speak to us this morning. Let your word come accurately. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to understand you. Let there be clarity for all. Thank you for salvation, for deliverance, for freedom, for liberty, for newness of life. Thank you for the blessing. 
in Jesus mighty name we have worshiped hallelujah amen hallelujah glory to God amen thank you choir hallelujah all right um, today is the, the word of the Lord's service so we're going to go into the word of the Lord for the month God has spoken this is a month of getting it right catching the right right opportunity right connection right open doors right circumstance right situation everything the right all right so in verse 24 of matthew chapter 17 we read the story where jesus released this word and we've been talking about this word and been praying about it throughout the week so i'm just going to build on that and we're going to take the communion and then um, I will introduce something to us. And initiate, um, because, well, um, suggestions and um, comments. So I want to reintroduce uh, Family Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I have three things to do before we, <laughs> we close today. So let's go straight to this one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of us are excited to be in God's house this morning? Are you thanking God really? That you're not waking up from Angover, <laughs> you are in church serving God. Amen. All right, let's read what Jesus said here because this is the word of the Lord for the month. And I want you to receive it with all your heart. Verse 24 says, When they were come to Capernaum, they that received the tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? And he said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom and tribute, of their own children or of strangers? And verse 26 says, Peter said unto him, Of strangers. And Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free, notwithstanding, verse 27, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, Go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first come up, cometh up. And when thou art opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee. And this is very, very, very powerful because Jesus said, Go and catch a fish. And he said, the very first one, the very first. Can you say the very first? Say, I'm getting it right. I've gotten it right. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said the very first one. And, and I said that if Jesus had told Peter to go to a pond to catch a fish, and that there will be money in the mouth of the fish, the probability of getting the right fish, the first catch, will still be there because it's a pond. If it was a bucket where they put some fish, you know, the probability also will be there. Are you getting what I'm saying? But to go to the sea, <laughs> the probability of catching the right fish was zero. Or let me say almost zero. But God moved that probability from zero to 100%. That's what you need to see. He moved that probability from zero to 100%. Why? Because as soon as Peter got to the sea and threw the, the hook in, the very first fish he pulled out had the money. 
this month you will get it right and if you believe you get it right the first time I didn't hear your amen I said I didn't hear your amen yes it's a believing amen that you need all right now Jesus didn't say Peter go to the fish the sea and keep catching fish there's one that has money so Peter catch the first one opens him and no money throws it in the basket second one third one fourth one fifth one and then he started at 8 a.m and then by noon finally he catches the right one that's all what god is doing maybe situation have been like that for you you try the first one second one third one fourth one you know like we say persevere be persistent that's part of the growth in kingdom you understand god wants us to be persistent god wants us to have patience but this month god is giving you the extra the very first one you get it right do you believe that? All right. Anytime God speaks like this, all right, it's because there's a power released to make it to happen. Jesus said something. Look at what Jesus said. And that will help us. John 6, 63. Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, you may still be wondering, okay, what does that mean? Spirit and life. What does that mean? Look at Job. Job chapter 4. So that we can be able to capture it. Because the spirit of this word is being released this morning. And you must have it. So you can walk in your situation. You're getting it right. I say you've gotten it right. This month, you get the right, the right connection in the name of Jesus. You get the right situation in the name of Jesus. The right event in the name of Jesus. The right moment in the name of Jesus. The right open doors in the name of Jesus. The right opportunity in the name of Jesus. The right. If you are trusting for a partner, this is the time you get the right one. So Job in chapter 4, let me check the verse now. Verse 12, from verse 12. Job chapter 4 from verse 12. He said, now a thing was secretly brought unto me, and my ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me, trembling, which made my bones to shake. What was causing that? His bones were shaking. Fear came upon him. All right? He said, then a spirit passed before my face. So when God, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. This is something like he's talking about. A spirit passed before my face and the air of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I couldn't discern the form thereof. So that spirit didn't have a form. So it wasn't an angel. That spirit didn't have a form. It wasn't a demon because he had a message. That spirit had a voice. An image was before my eyes. There was silence and I heard a voice saying, shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? And then he went on. So there are spirits. There is the Holy Ghost. You should understand that there is the Holy Ghost. But there are also spirits. When God, you know God is a spirit. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. So when God takes holiness like I always say if he takes holiness and he wants to give it to you David if he takes holiness and wants to give holiness to you what do you think that holiness will be a coat a tie a stone water oil or spirit spirit why God is not oil God is not stone he's not he's not suit <laughs> 
You understand? He's not a tie. He's a spirit. So if he's going to send something to you, it's going to be spirit. So that's why we call it spirit of what? Holiness. That's why we call it spirit. So when God speaks, spirits are released. This morning, spirit has been released. When Jesus said, go Peter to the sea and catch a fish, throw in an hook, the very first fish that came, a spirit was released. That spirit began to move that fish. As Peter was walking towards the sea, the shoreline of the sea is there. As Peter was walking towards the sea, the fish was moving towards where Peter would land. As Peter was moving, maybe the fish first of all went this way because Peter was going this way. Maybe as Peter was going this way, the fish was coming this way. And Peter said, okay, this place looks deeper. And then the fish changed direction. Why? The spirit entered the fish, took it up, and began to move it to where Peter would land. So that when Peter throws in the, ro- the hook, the very first one will be the right fish. You have caught the right this month. The very first month, if you believe. Because when the word of the Lord comes, it only comes to those who believe. If you believe. The very first one will be the right one in the name of Jesus Christ. After this morning, the very first one will be the right one in the name of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel in chapter 2. And then we quickly pray and take the communion. Ezekiel in chapter 2 verse 1. Look at what he said. And he said unto me, I've read it several times here. Son of man, stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. And that, that looked like a command. Why? Ezekiel had seen this cherubim with four faces, the wheel, the, the cloud upon which the throne of God was and all that beautiful scen- 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 scenery. And um, the energy coming out from the cherubim, you know, sapped out all the energy in Ezekiel. And he didn't have strength. So he fell forward, flat on his face. No strength to stand, not even to crawl and get on the knees. He was flat before God. So God looked at him and said, son of man, stand to your feet and I will speak unto you. Now, normally we will expect Ezekiel to open his mouth and speak at that moment. Or oh, sorry, and stand up. You, you will expect Ezekiel to get up. To just get up. But no, Ezekiel told us what happened to him. Verse 2, he said, and the spirit. The spirit from the mouth of God. When men speak, it's sound. So, depending on whether you understand the language of the man or not, you understand the sound that is coming out from his mouth. All right? If I say sour, sour, what is sour, sour? Does anybody know the meaning of sour, sour? Anybody? If you know the meaning, sour, sour. Okay, do you know the. So, that sound doesn't make sense to you. But if I'm speaking to a Swahili person, that sound makes sense. If I say jambo, do you know the meaning of jambo? That sound also doesn't make sense to you. Why? Because it's not English, it's Swahili. All right? If I say buana sifiwe, uh, hey, that's Greek and Hebrew. Why? It's still, it's still Swahili. All right? The one I said last, buana sifiwe, means praise the Lord. Jambo means welcome. Sawa sawa means thank you. Okay, what about akuaba? At least that one is near you. Uh, you know that's Ghanaian language, Abi. It sounds like a cowboy, Abi. Uh-huh. So when men speak, they communicate sound that has meaning to the hearer. When God speaks. It's not just sound. It's spirit. Did you get that? So that's why Ezekiel said, the spirit entered me and picked me up and set me on my feet. Do you believe that the spirit of the world is going into the situation to create that right connection for you? Do you believe that this morning? Then raise your hand and say, Father, I receive the spirit of your word. I receive the spirit of the prophetic word. Going forth now to locate the right opportunities. Whatever right you need, 
begin to say it lord the right contract the right land maybe you are into real estate business the right property maybe you are into service services the right clients the clients that can pay our price the clients that have the possessing power for our type of pricing yes lord in the name of jesus the right ones the right ones the right ones the right ones say lord by the spirit of your word this morning I declare that the right ones are located and they are brought to me. They are brought to me. They are brought to me. They are brought to our company. They are brought to me. They are brought to my life. They are brought to me. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak it and release it. Lord, I declare your, the spirit of your word locates those people, locates those moments, locates those events, locates those circumstances, those situations for me, those right clients, those right people, those right open doors, those right opportunities, and brings them to me like it brought the fish to Peter. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of your word, yes, possesses those circumstances, situation, possesses those people and bring them to me. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus mighty name. Father, bless this communion emblems. Let the wafer be the body of Jesus. The content of the cup be the blood of Jesus. We receive life and access to this new season. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. They will serve you the communion. We're going to use it to partake. We open the new season. A season of divine visitation where the right is connected to us. The right. <laughs> that right opportunity for somebody is somewhere. It doesn't matter where it is. Whether it's Japan or in um, New Zealand, Philippines, it doesn't matter where it is. It will find you. 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 The Bible says we should seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And he said all these things will be looking for us. Hallelujah. You alone at my heart desire and I long to worship you. Have we all been served? You alone had my strength and shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. First layer and take out the wafer. And say with me, Father, by this body of Jesus, I receive access to the season of catching the right. The power to have the right come to me is released right now thank you for access through the body of jesus in jesus name i receive access to revelation throughout this month insight in the word throughout this month insight in my place of work opening of eyes to see 
solutions, strategies, and miracles, blessings, and abundance. I receive access to safety, to abundance, to goodness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now break that wafer into two and take it and eat it. Open the second layer. And say, Father, by this blood of Jesus, I receive forgiveness, cleansing, and the purging of my heart from dead works to serve the living God. Today, I declare this is the prize. The blood of Jesus that paid full price for me to have the right. So by this blood and the purchased possession, I declare all right opportunities, all right things, they come to me. I, they meet with me, I meet with them. By this blood, I declare I am in the right place at the right time. With the right people having the right things doing the right things taking my rightful harvest my blessing and all that am i in the name of jesus thank you for the blood thank you for the sacrifice in jesus name let's drink of the blood all right put your finger inside the cup you'll see get a drop or two mark your forehead with it you can touch your forehead with it or put a sign of the cross, whichever one you want. And declare with me and say, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is my covering and that of members of my family. We are secured under the covering of the blood. We are safe. No evil can befall us this month. No plague can come near us this month. The mark of the blood is upon us let no man trouble us let no demon trouble us by this blood we overcome we are triumphant we are victorious we subdue all forces in the name of jesus pray that in the holy ghost Regedebe, regedebe, be shufia paska tangalus kofian pesco tota. Jates de tatapame kotoflaba. Ria kakamas koponamas kodiaba. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lift up your two hands. This month, God has spoken. And you have believed. And He's your Father. He has said what He desires. You have accepted it. So we declare. There is fulfillment in your life. This month, you get it right. This month, the very first will be the right one in the name of Jesus Christ. The power that pulled the fish to Peter is pushing everything to your side. And they meet with you right there when you are in the name of Jesus Christ. As you move towards them, they are moving towards you in the name of Jesus. You meet with them in the name of Jesus. You take possession of them in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the word has been released. It will not fail in your matter. It will not fail in your situation. You are excelling this month in the name of Jesus. You have outstanding testimony this month in the name of Jesus. This is the last two months of the year. The first of the last two months. Your harvest for this year shall not miss you in the name of Jesus. Wherever your harvest is, it will locate you in the name of Jesus. I say it again, you will be in the right place. At the right time. Carrying the right things. Meeting the right people.
saying the right words, obtaining the right result, and taking your rightful harvest in the name of Jesus. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The blessing of the Lord is upon your head. Because I'm hearing Oreo Nigba body. I don't even understand fully what that means in Yoruba. <laughs> That's very interesting. But I think it means that your, your, your head will not. Um, well, it means bad things will not happen to you anyway. Bad things. Or maybe your head will escape bad things or something like that. The blessing of Jehovah is upon your head in the name of Jesus. The blessing of Abraham is upon your head in the name of Jesus. No curse can walk in your life in the name of Jesus. No plague can walk in your life in the name of Jesus. You cannot be cursed in the name of Jesus. You are the blessed of the Lord and your blessing cannot be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise. Lift up your hand and thank him. Just thank him. Say, Father, I thank you for your word. I receive your word. I get it right this month. The right things come my way this month. The right people are meeting. In the name of Jesus. The right, the right, the right, the right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Do we know this song? Um, the, the Yoruba of it is Can we sing it in English? You don't know it. <laughs> Amen. Don't worry. They are new generation psalmist. <laughs> All right. I wanted us to sing it in English. I only know it in Yoruba. I don't know it in English. I know. I know. It's now thank we all are God, but I don't know the other ones. Ah uh, no. There's no time to look at him. Okay, so let's sing it in Yoruba. Do we know the Yoruba one? Okay, so let's sing that one. And if you know the English, you can sing it alone. phone you can check the google now thank the oh god and um, search google search why is google not searching now 
thank we all our God. Now thank we all. Okay. Hey, what are you doing to me? Google. What's going on here? Okay. Now let me go to my phone. So do you have it on your on your phone? Let's just stay sing like three stanzas of it. Do we have it? See, Mama wanted to help me. This thing is now. <laughs> eh? Yeah, so we should not refuse help. When help comes, look, get help. I didn't want to take our own. I wanted, um, okay. So we sing stanza one. Okay, there are just three. So let's just do the three. Are we ready? One, two, three, go. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and for who wondrous things has done in whom is world rejoice in whom is world rejoice who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way so on our with countless gifts of love with countless gifts of and still is ours today. And still is ours today. Oh, may this bound to us, God. Oh, may this bound to us through all our life be near us. With ever joyful heart. And bless peace to cheer us. To keep us in his grace and guide us when we are when we perplex guide us when and free us from all ills us from all ills of this world in the next of this world and all praise and thanks to our to God praise and thanks to God the Father now be given the now be and the Son and the Spirit blessed and Spirit blessed who reign in highest heaven who reign in highest the one eternal God Whom heaven and earth adore. Heaven and earth adore. For thus it was, is now. It was, is now. And shall be evermore. And shall be evermore. And thus it was, is now. And shall be. Amen. All right, God bless you. you. May be seated. Father, we thank you for your word in season. We appreciate you and we give you glory and praise. All right, um, in just some few minutes, I want to, um, a couple of weeks ago, almost two months now, we introduced to us uh, what we call Elohim Koinonia. And um, we are setting this up to be able to reach as many people as possible 
with the message of the cross. As we are doing that, we are also kind of rebranding preaching of the gospel. So I want you to really see it as that. We are rebranding the preaching of the gospel. All right? Now, I told you that um, the end was not salvation. Even though the way we have preached the gospel all over the years is as if salvation is the end. The end was not Jesus the Savior. That looks a little bit tough to say because of people who have religiously accepted that position for years. No, that's not the end. The end is Jesus, the Christ. Because Jesus himself told us why he came. And I need you to see that so that you can be able to run with us in this. See, we are, we are living in a time where there are certain language and way of speaking that Satan has already raised a resistance against the church in the hearts of unbelievers. So it's tough to reach people. That's why I believe. You know, I didn't see it this way before until God began to speak to me. I was in one conference one time and they talked about evangelism. And I was on fire. I told Mama, I said, we're going to do this, this, do this, do this, do this. When I came home, I set up that. I was ready to carry it. And God said, stop. I said, stop. How? He said, don't do it. I said, Daddy, why? He said, don't do it, son. I said, no, no. If I don't know your voice, I'll have said this. The devil. How can you tell me not to preach the gospel? You don't want me to preach the gospel? He said, no, son. I don't want to preach the gospel like this. And then I said, okay. I calmed down. And then it has been two years since that experience. And now I see clearly why. Because he wanted us. It's not something that is totally different. It's the same thing. It's just that we need to now present it the right way. And I need you to see it. All right? Now, Jesus said in John 10, 10, you know that scripture. I'll quote it because of time. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So, Jesus didn't come to give us religion. No. He didn't come to make us better people. No. Because we think, oh, we go to church so that we can learn some better ways of living. No, that's not the old show. That's not it at all. Yes, we'll become better people. You understand? Definitely. But that better people is not better people in that sense. It's totally different. Jesus said, I came to give them something that they don't have. Our kind of life. Which helps you and enables people to be able to live like us. Then Jesus began to also speak more about this eternal life. And he gave us two clear meanings. One... That this eternal life is something that the Father has in him. John 5, 26. As the Father has life in him, so has he given to the Son to have life in him. That this life is what the Father has in him that makes him all that he is. God is powerful because of life. God is love because of life. So life is the source of everything that God is. I'll say that again. Life, eternal life, Zoe. That's the name of it in Greek. Zoe is the source of everything that God is. So if you want to be whatever God is, you have to get the same thing that God has, otherwise you can't be. You may try, but you will only produce results that will not be recognized in the spirit. That's why the Bible says, all the righteousness that men can produce are like filled rags in the realm of the spirit. Why? You may see one person living right, you know, living a clean life is a man is living right is doing the right things he loves his family loves his wife he doesn't sin doesn't lie doesn't cheat doesn't kill people and all that stuff and then you see another person living the same and then they bring both of them in the spirit and one is totally cancelled and rejected the other is accepted the reason is because the way it manifests in the physical is not how it actually manifests in the spirit because when your holiness is not a product of eternal life it is rejected in the spirit it's not respected when your righteousness is not a product of eternal life, it's rejected. 
it has to be a product of eternal life for it to have the quality that the spirit realm recognizes. That's why I said our righteousness are filled the rags. But when we accept his own righteousness, that stands. When we accept his holiness and we begin to live out that holiness, that stands. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they wanted us to have the life that makes them who they are. You can only love like God if you have the life that makes God to love like he loves. Do you understand? So the life of God is like the engine that makes God all that God is. So Jesus described eternal life as that. Then Jesus also described eternal life as something else. And that's found in John 17 in verse 3. He said, I, 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 have, I have preached to them. I have told them, you know, everything you want me to tell them. You know, what, that, that is said later. But let me just read that verse 3. He said, okay, from verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life, which is Zoe, to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So, eternal life is, apart from being that thing that makes God everything that God is, eternal life is also meeting with God and knowing God. Meeting with Jesus and knowing Jesus. Alright? And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And what he's simply saying is that if you are not free, it means you don't know the truth. Meaning you have not experienced the truth. To experience the truth, you have to spend time with it. That's why knowing God there is not about hearing about God. It's meeting with God and spending time with him, fellowship with him. That's what it's all about. Intimacy. And in 2 Corinthians, Paul was speaking. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to whom? To himself. Through who? By Jesus Christ. So you see, the end is not Jesus the Savior. Who is also Jesus Christ. The end is the Father. And the Father there is the fellowship of the Father and Jesus. So it's also Jesus. Jesus is also the end. But Jesus is the end, not as Savior, but as God that you fellowship with. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he said, he said, he said, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of, the, of reconciliation. So God has committed to us a ministry. What's the ministry? Reconcile men back to God, not to church, not to born againism. To God. Bring them to God. Bring them back. Because they came out from there. Verse 19 said, To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to whom? He didn't even mention Christ. Christ is the gate, the way. That's why he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way. To the father he said no one can come to the father except through me it's very important for us to see this now some people will i mean probably attack you but you do they persecuted jesus so we're, we're not caring about that we're caring about the world we want to save the people we need to bring to god there are few human beings that will reject god I tell you, there are few. There are few. To which God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of that reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to who? To God. And John put it this way in 1 John chapter 1 verse 3. 1 John chapter 1 verse 3. I read from verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life, 
For life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with who? The Father and with who? His Son, Jesus Christ. So the fellowship that we are called to come to is the fellowship of the Father, the koinonia of the Father. The word fellowship is the word koinonia. The fellowship of the Father and Jesus Christ. Who is the person that helps us to get into that fellowship? The Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 13, the last verse, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings on to that communion. Now listen. What is the desire of God? See these three dimensions. God wants every human being in his family. What is that family? The Elohim family. Why are we calling it Elohim family? Is it because the name of our church is Elohim? No. God wants you to be part of the Elohim family so you can partake in the Elohim koinonia and then reign with them through the Elohim kingdom, which is called the kingdom of God. I'll say that again. This is what God wants. He wants every human being, every human being, wherever they are on planet Earth, to come into their family, their Elohim family, and then be able to partake in the Elohim koinonia, their fellowship, and then be able to reign with them through the Elohim kingdom, that is called the kingdom of God, for all eternity. That's the, that's, that's the old eternal plan of God. That's what we call eternal purpose. Why does he want us to come into the family first? Because to come into the family, you have to become a God. It's, that, is not, that is not something you should be afraid to say anymore. See, for you to partake in the Elohim koinonia, the word koinonia is fellowship. The word Elohim is God's. All right? G-O-D-S. It's a plural word. Are you getting what I'm saying? For you to partake in the Elohim Kononia, you have to be a God. That's why they want you to be forced, to first be born into their family. That's why Jesus came to unite with mankind. Jesus came to unite with mankind. Why? They wanted humans to be made gods. Let's not be afraid of this word gods anymore. Even Hollywood is not afraid to use it. They have a new movie called Eternals now. We are the true Eternals, but they are putting some fakes out there. And they are making them gays and all types. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are the true Eternals, if you don't know. We are the true resurrected ones, if you don't know. That's the truth. Eternal life is not about living forever. Everybody is going to live forever. Anybody that doesn't even accept Jesus Christ is going to live forever in the lake of fire. They are going to live forever. Demons are going to live forever. Angels are going to live forever. Everything is going to live forever. But where you live is what counts. Are you living in the Elohim family? Then you have eternal life. If you are living outside the Elohim family forever, then you are living forever in the lake of fire. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's important for us to understand what God is up to. So God wants to make every human spirit. Their bodies will still be human. Just like my body is still human, your body is still human. So we are still subject to all the human you know, flaws and temptations. The only thing is that by the strength of the Holy Ghost in our spirit and the nature of God in our spirit, we are able to live above the weakness of the physical flesh. And then we are even able to take that physical flesh along with us to some levels. To get to some dimensions. Are you getting what I'm saying? But what happens to a man when he gets born again? The spirit inside changes from human spirit to an Elohim spirit. He becomes part of God's family. Then he qualifies to partake in the koinonia. The fellowship. Because if you are not a God, you can't be in the koinonia. The koinonia is the koinonia of Elohim. You have to be a God to be in the fellowship of God's. That's why Psalm 82, where he said in verse 6, 
ye are gods, all of you children of the Most High. He started that verse by saying, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The word mighty there is Elohim. God stands in the congregation of Elohim. So what he wanted is Elohim. A family of gods. So they can come and partake in the communion. What, what is offered us in the communion? Number one, the privilege, which is a right given to every child in the family of Elohim. The privilege and the right to have conversation with the father, the head of the communion, the head of the Elohim family. Every one of us has a right. That's why we are teaching intimacy. You can talk to God. God wants to have conversation with you. God wants to relate with you where you and God become friends. You discuss every day. God wants that. Then when you come into the koinonia, you also get the opportunity to partake in divine nature. What is divine nature? That which makes you to manifest like them. So you can walk in love like them. You can walk in holiness like them. So what people said is impossible. And they say, nobody can be perfect. It's rubbish. Why? Because when you come into the koinonia and you participate in the fellowship there, you find out that gradually love becomes your nature. It's not what you are trying to dramatize like you're acting a movie. So you dramatize it in church during the week, you're a devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? You actually see it as your nature, your natural disposition and response to things. And it keeps growing. It keeps taking over what flesh will want to do. And then you find yourself doing what is truly divine nature. When you come into the communion, that's what you get. When you come into the communion, you get the opportunity to partake in divine potencies. Wisdom that gives you strategy. Wisdom that helps you solve earthly problems. Because when we say wisdom, people are thinking uh, that's the wisdom of God, like wisdom to pray, wisdom to receive prophetic word. No, no. Wisdom to apply in engineering, to apply in architecture, to apply in chemistry, in pharmacy. Wisdom to apply in IT. Wisdom to apply in real estate. Wisdom to apply in economics. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what he's talking about. And what does that wisdom make you? It makes you a solution creator, a solution provider. When you get into a place, you provide solution. A believer is answer. Saviors shall come forth from Mount Zion. You are the saviors. And he send you all out to the world. It's wisdom. Because you are partaking in the wisdom. You are partaking in, in the community. You share in those ways. You share also in power. That's why as we preach this gospel, there will be a new definition of church. Because you are not bringing somebody, you see, we have brought people to salvation. And when they get born again, they're now in church. And then they come into our midst, they're singing, they're singing, they're singing. After a while, they begin to find reasons. Or let me say, they begin to give reasons why they are in church. So a lot of people are in church because I come from a Christian family. Some people are in church because... Uh, um, our, pastor is, pastor, our pastor is very anointed. He, I mean, he does miracles. All types of reasons are not the main reason. <laughs> does God want to solve our problems? Yes. Does God want us healed? Yes. All those things are part of the package. But the main package is to come into the koinonia and partake in the koinonia. Then you can reign with them. And where do you start reigning? From where you work. From where the industry you are in, you start reigning on their behalf. For all eternity. I know for some people it's still like, okay, what's pastor saying now? Don't worry, you'll get it. Because I'm going to say it over and over again until you get it. And when you get it, when you meet people, you'll be telling them, it's time for you to get back home. Home is calling you. Which home? The koinonia of the Elohim, where you belong, is calling you. You have a seat there. Every human being has a seat there. The armed on the street has a seat there. He just needs to accept the sonship offer. And then his spirit changes from that spirit that's making him do all the things he's doing to the spirit that is of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what God is doing. 
and we want you to help spread this spread it present the true gospel to people God wants you back home <laughs> God wants you in the hello him God wants you in the koinonia God wants you to become a God in your spirit and partake in this koinonia that's where he wants you and then from there you can represent them and how do you get to become part of that oh somebody paid the price to make it easy for you and stop telling people to give their life to Christ tell them to come and take what Christ has to offer they have nothing to give my brother and my sister yes are they giving their life to Christ yes they are are you hearing what I'm saying they are they are giving their life to Christ but listen they are actually collecting something all through the scripture that's how the scripture presented it there's an offer sonship offer in God so that's what you should tell people there is a sonship offer you have been rejecting or you have not you are not aware you're supposed to take is available for you to be a son of God and have the opportunity to walk with God personally when you give your life to Christ um, Wally, did you have anything to offer God me there was no nothing no nada There was nothing I could put on the table. But he gave me all. What about you? So why are we telling them to give something? What are they, what are they to give? Okay, kill effect ball or one gun. Kill effect ball or one one. Show one 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 effect bani. Kawabri law long be one one in shake a but one one one. You understand? They are to accept the offer. Now, we have created this site and we are trying to push this as far as we can. We have tried to present this gospel in a very simple way like I just did, you know, but better than I did now. It's on that site. We just need you to be the conduit to connect people there and let them make their choice. We are praying and we know that God will touch people. All right. So we did this card. We called it Elohim Colonia. You can use it to spark up conversation with people. You can just say, oh, I'm part of this community. Would you like to be? And give it to the person. Say, what is this? Uh, do you want us to talk about it? Or do you want to scan the barcode and go and check it out? Okay, let's talk about it. Then you can have a conversation with the person. We did a flyer one time we gave you. You can go through that flyer. You can use it to talk to anybody about Jesus. We are still talking about Jesus, you know. We are bringing them to Christ. And Christ is bringing them to intimacy with God. But we are actually telling them the end. So that they don't begin to make money the reason why they are saved. Or to marry the reason why they are saved. The reason why you are saved first. Yes, God will give you husband. God will give you children. All those things are part of benefits. All right, but the main reason why you are saved is to get into this coin here. So they're going to give you these cards. We're going to give you, uh, please, we have to give everybody 20. Now, listen, if you're not going to do what I'm going to say, don't collect it because we want it in people's hands. And I don't want you to just uh, go somewhere and just, hey, take, 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 take. Mm -mm -mm. Give it to people and say, I'm part of this community and I want you to be a part. Or you want to find out what it is the person says okay take alright we need you to give it to 20 people in the course of this week put it in 20 hands we want to put out 10,000 of this and then do some online publicity also in the same capacity so today we have a thousand and that's what we are starting with so please when they get to you and you know you are not going to give it out don't collect it because we don't want you to stack it anywhere. Alright? But if you're going to be able to do it to give out 20, we just need 50 among us to be able to do it and in 10 weeks we'll have put out that 10,000. Alright? So they will give you 20. Can we have more people doing this? We need more people. We want more people. More people. More people. I need like 10 people if possible so that like somebody is handling one line 
How many lines do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 people, please. So everybody, take one line. Take one line, and then you give everybody 20 each. 20 each. You help us put it in people's hands and talk, 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 talk. Preach the gospel. You know, somebody wants to have a conversation, have that conversation with them. Tell them God wants you to come into this koinonia. It's the koinonia that is the goal. The goal is the koinonia. And then they can reign with him. Then they can have their problems solved. They can have all healings they want, all, all the miracles that they want. But they have to get to the koinonia. It, that's where God is calling them to. That's where God is calling them to. So just give 20 each. 20 each. Please, like I said, if you feel, oh, 20 is too much, I can only do 10. Please, just tell them, please, give me 10. I can't do more than 10. The reason why I'm saying that is because I don't want us to go and put it in our house or drop it on the shelf in our sitting room. No, it's not a decoration material. It's a tool for sparking conversation to preach the gospel. It's a tool to lead people to the right thing we are supposed to lead them to. God sent Jesus to die for your sins. God sent Jesus to take your place, die, go to hell in your place, so that you can become a son of God, become a God, and come into the koinonia. What's the koinonia? It's the fellowship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God wants you to be a part of this fellowship. What will I get when I come to that fellowship? You will have the opportunity of conversation with God. You will have the opportunity to partake in their nature, partake in their potency. Those are the things. That's the goal. That's where we are driving them to. That's where we are driving them to. If you feel you want more than 20, please take it. Because we have to push out this, this 1,000 pieces. Do we still have more in, the, in there? Yeah, so please, if you want more, you feel you can do more than 20, maybe another 10, Please just raise your hand, they will give it to you. Another 20, just raise your hand, they will give it to you. Because we have to push out this, this um, 1,000. I mean, uh, 1,000, yes. And then I also want to say this. If you walk in a place that is like maybe a restaurant, um, a place where people come to, all right, where you have a lot of customers coming, you know, you can take like 20 or 30, put it on the shelf or on the decks, you know, there so that people can, like in a, in a uh, salon, for example, you can put it on the shelf. You know, people can walk in there and pick it. You understand? In a restaurant, you know, uh, any place that's a public place. All right. Okay. Can we stand to our feet? We still have some more, Abby? Yeah. So if you need more, please collect. Please collect. And please help, help, help preserve like um, 20 or 30 for me and Mama. Because I don't think you've gotten it up here. Okay, so. Um, Father, we are committing these cards to you. Now, um, you, you can check the website yourself. Sorry, I, I forgot to say this few other information. Um, please, listen. You can check the website yourself and then click and join the community. All right? At the moment, um, it will tell you to fill in your name, email, and that. But that will increase, uh, I don't know, maybe by afternoon today to add in your city and nation because this is going to spread. We're going to put it everywhere, all over the world. We're, we're going to uh, also have the site in Spanish and in French before December and uh, before the end of December by God's grace we're going to have it in Spanish and French so that people who are uh, Spanish speaking people can click and then read the site in, 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 uh, in their language alright now and then we're going to have the video also translated to those languages um, now I would like you because you can't tell somebody to come and join something you are not a part of yet. So, scan the barcode or check the website is there. Join the community yourself. Fill the form. It will lead you to Clubhouse. 
Does anybody know Clubhouse? You know about Clubhouse? Clubhouse is a social media platform. All right? It will lead you to a Clubhouse um, now, but later on, it will be that after you uh, sign up, it will tell you that you get an email, then give you a link to Clubhouse. Clubhouse, you have to download the app because every Saturday we're going to be having a Clubhouse session for this community of people. So this, this number one, it will, this will bring harvest to our church, but this is beyond our church. So we're building a global community with this. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there's going to be a lot of harvest come to our church. You understand? But we're having a global community. So on that Clubhouse, we're going to be having, we had a trial session a couple of weeks ago for of that. Already now in that Clubhouse, our club on that Clubhouse, the Yellow Economia Club, uh, we have about 40 people there. You know, so I need you all to go and download. All right. Number one, go to the website, sign up, download the app, register on the Clubhouse, and you know, get to be a part of the Elohim Koinonia Club. So that when you're telling somebody join something, you're also part of it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then, listen, when they sign up for 12 weeks, for 12 weeks, they'll be getting emails from us that has a video link of 10 minutes teaching, and those teachings are to bring them from wherever they are to that intimacy for 12 weeks. All right, we already set that in motion. Um, I think we have four weeks of it ready already. So there is it's automated uh, emails they're going to be getting. So you can encourage them when anybody signs up. Listen to the videos; they will help you. In fact, if you sign up, you will get the video. You can watch and see what they will listen to. I'm telling you, um, the Lord has not made it that easy for me. That in ten minutes, I can tell somebody. How to fellowship with God through the word. I can tell somebody how to fellowship with God in prayer, through tongues, and then take them through different things. Just 10, 10 minutes. I believe it's the grace of God. And I believe God is doing something in this time to change many lives. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay? The Lord bless you. Can we lift up the cards? Father, I've asked that you sanctify this. Lord, we have tried to make it to come out the best way we can. We're going to improve on this. But Lord, let these bring people to Christ. Let people go to the site, listen to the message, and be saved. And help them to see the koinonia as their target. Not money, not things. But see those things as the blessings that come along. For the koinonia, God himself, as our goal and target in the name of Jesus. Help us to spread this new way of preaching. That we direct people to God. We point them to God. God becomes their goal and pursuit. In the name of Jesus. And Father, help us. I know so many of us who, are, who have evangelistic grace inside us. Lord, spark up that. As they give these cards and start conversations. In the name of Jesus. Those who are afraid of preaching the gospel. Lord, as they give out these cards and start conversations. Let the strength and the, 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 the vigor to preach the gospel come upon us all. Fill us with utterance. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you say this after me? Say, say the Lord wants all human beings to belong to the Elohim family and partake in the Elohim colonia and reign in the Elohim kingdom Call the kingdom of God for all eternity. Say it again. God wants every human being to come into the Elohim family, be born into the Elohim family, partake in the Elohim koinonia, and reign in the Elohim kingdom. Call the kingdom of God for all eternity. That's the plan of God. That's the eternal purpose. All right? And Father, we declare this first Sunday of the month, the word of the Lord Sunday and family Sunday in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will visit us this day. You will speak to us as families, as couples, as children, as community in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing what only you can do. We give you glory and praise. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
All right, I'm going to pray straight over our offerings. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you bless the seed that every one of us are giving, whether it's a tithe, an offering, land seed, project seed. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you pour out your spirit upon our seed, that there will be a harvest in the name of Jesus. Thank you for super abundant harvest to the praise of your name. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we all just close our eyes one minute? If you are here this morning, you've heard me say what God wants. And probably you're not yet part of the Elohim family. You're not yet born again. And that means born of God. You have not yet accepted that sonship offer. Whether you're watching us online or you're here, I want to pray for you right now. I don't want this opportunity to miss you. God wants you to come into that koinonia and, and, and fellowship with the Father and belong and partake in divine nature. He wants you. He wants you. If you're here and you're like that, or maybe you have become born of God at one time, but you've gone back. Satanic forces have pulled you back into all kind of rot. Jesus is waiting for you to come back. He will cleanse you. The Father will accept you. So put your right hand on your chest. Say this simple prayer after me. If you're here or you're watching us online, say, Father, please forgive me. I accept the offer of sonship. Today, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my salvation. Today, I declare him as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for giving birth to my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Something has happened to you. Grace has been given to you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's give our offerings. I'm just trying to do everything and close the service. All right, we give our offerings and... Uh, you and I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You and I, you and I, you and I will praise the Lord. You and I will praise the Lord. You and I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You and I, you and I, you and I, you and I, you and I will praise. I will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You and I. You and I. You and I. You and I. You and I will praise the Lord. You and I will praise the Lord. You and I will worship the Lord. Hallelujah. You and I. You and I. Alright, is anybody fellowshipping with us for the first time? This is your first time in this church? Can you wave your hand? First time in this church? Can you wave your hand? Alright, thank you. Okay, so next Sunday we'll have some people come for the first time. Amen. Okay, um, please, um, there's going to be a short meeting for all that are in business. So please wait in this side for just some few minutes after we share the grace. Also, we have um, a, a program this evening called Get Involved. Um, it's basically about encouraging us into politics. So if you have been having passion, you have been crazily like something must happen about Nigeria, please come and hear these people talk. All right? 
we, are, we have created a platform for this to happen. And we'll keep doing things like this. All right? So if you are the next uh, uh, senator, vice president that will help us, please get there and get involved. 4 p.m. today. Then um, from next Sunday, uh, the business people also get to know this. From next Sunday, from 8.20 to 8.40, we'll be having a uh, business um, meeting for business people. It will be a time for impartation, learn one or two things. You know, so please try and be there so you can get. But I, I, I will, I will be um, doing more of the impartation in that uh, meeting. Then from time to time, we'll get people to talk to us, you know, teach us one or two things. All right, can we stand to our feet? How many of us are blessed today? So I meet, I've met the right. I've met the right. I've caught the right. The very first is the right one. In the name of Jesus. All right, can we say the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Seeds of the Lord. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>